modern raiders are coming to War Thunder soon-ish, right? We don't know yet, but this will happen at a certain point in the game. And with that, we need to explain to you guys what is an electronic scanned array raider. This is the future of raiders in the game. While we're still using the mechanical scanned array raiders, it's a good time to redo some of the videos that I did a while back. And one of them is trying to explain the famous PESA raiders and AESA raiders, right? The raiders that are electronic scanned instead of mechanically scanned, right? So we're gonna talk about how they work, the differences between a mechanical and electronic one, and the differences between a PESA and AESA, and what can carry them in a soonish future. So the idea here is that I'm going to try to simplify how these raiders work. It's a very, very complex subject. It's even harder because English is not my first language, so it is even harder for me to explain this. So bear with me, but let's try to get this going, okay? So the first thing that you have to understand is that mechanical scanned array raiders, which are the raiders, the pulse doppler raiders that we have in the game right now, they normally have one transmitter and receiver module, normally. Normally, the steering of these raiders to make it look left or right is done mechanically. So, it basically have to gimbal the raider to the left or to the right. The idea behind the electronic scanned array raiders, before we even get to the AESA and PESA differences and stuff like that, is that of, instead of having one transmitter and receiver module, and remember, a transmitter and receiver module is basically what the radar is, right? So it will have basically one very short transmission of radiation and then of radio waves, right? And it will wait for it. The same module will basically turn itself off and wait and listen for the echo of that radio wave bouncing back from an enemy aircraft or the ground or whatever, right? It's very similar to a sonar, but instead of having sound, it is having radio waves or radiation, right? So you have to understand that. And each of these older raiders, they have one transmitter and receiver module. So it transmits, it's turning itself off, it receives the echo, transmits again, and it keeps doing that. But the problem with it is that it takes a lot of time to do the scan, right? So one of the ways that uh, they actually try to make this, um, you know, problem to be fixed is to have multiple transmitter and receiver modules or something that simulates that that we're gonna get into later, like phase shifters, right? But the idea is that of, instead of having just one big transmitter and receiver module that will take a lot of time because, it, because it's just one and it has to mechanically steer the radar to look into every single position in front of a radar uh, dish to actually be able to scan, you would have multiple ones or something to simulate multiple ones so that you can actually have smaller areas and with that, an instantaneous detection. So how it works is basically this. So again, like I said, the electronic scanner array radars try to have multiple transmitters and receivers. With that, you can have, instead of one big zone that the aircraft will have to scan, you can have hundreds of little ones. And starting at the same time, so the one on the top and the one on the bottom, the one on the left and one on the right and one in the middle and whatever position it is on the radar's like scan zone, the normal radar scan zone in front of the aircraft, they will all have it divided in little ones and they will start and end the scan itself all at the same time, which means that the aircraft can have an insta detection of everything that it's in front of them. It's a little bit hard to comprehend, but I hope it's, you know, <laughs> good enough, the explanation. So again, the mechanical one, the older ones that we have in the game have one transmitter and receiver module, one module that does all the job. These electronic ones will have multiple ones, hundreds of them, that will divide the workload of the scan zone and starting that scan at the same time, meaning they can do instantaneous detection. This is the first thing that the electronic scanned array radar is, you know, having that. The second thing is that instead of having to manually, you know, mechanically steer the radar to the left or to the right, 
with phase shifters or different TRMs, which are the transmitter and receiver modules like, that I was talking about, you can actually delay the transmission of that radio wave a little bit. So in the left, it will start a little bit like it's very, very short margins, but it will start a little bit later than the, the right one. And all in the middle will have kind of a cascade effect. This will create basically a wave. I will leave in the uh, in the screen right now how it works. Basically a wave of waves, basically, meaning that it is electronically like steering the radar. So without any mechanical gimbal of the radar dish itself, it's actually delaying all the little transmissions so that it creates a offset in angle wave of waves meaning that you can steer the the detection without having to steer the radar these are the two main things that you have to understand about an electronics canada ray radar i know it's a lot but let me know in the comments if you already got this part because i know it's complex okay so what are the differences in the game between mechanical radars and electronic ones they bring three main differences the first one and the most important one is that they have an instantaneous detection of targets so instead of waiting for all that scan zone it will basically be instantaneous throughout the whole pattern of the radar so it means that you can have uh, instead of having to have a narrow search to have a faster instantaneous detection or a faster update on your TWS you have to narrow it down the search you can have like the whole radar open up in 180 degrees if you want to and the radar will be able to detect all of those degrees instantaneously that's the main thing okay the second thing it has an incredible amount of gimbal limit compared to the normal mechanical radars so you can steer the radar without steering the antenna itself some radars even use that together with the mechanical steering to make it be able to do 90 degree detections the mig 29 smt and the aqua 41 in the game use a similar tech it's not the same but it's a very similar tech to this to be able to do this they are not full electronic scanner array radars but they use a, a little bit of a tech there to be able to literally look 90 degrees or 85 degrees or something like that to the side of the radar which means that you can basically fly perpendicular to a target while maintaining a lock which is an advantage of all IASAs and PESAs all the electronic radars okay and the third thing is that of course with the better technology that these radars were made in the 90s and 2000s the MiG-31 one was in the 70s to 80s but still all of these radars they had a way better technology than the radars that we have in the game right now which means that they have more range so they will have more range instantaneous detection in all degrees with the whole antenna of the radar 90 degrees on the front of the radar for example instantaneous detection you don't have to narrow it down or not or you can basically leave it open and you will see everything in near instant detection rates and with that an increase in the gimbal limit as well okay these are the three main differences that you have to think about so it's not a small feat it's a big change from the older mechanical scanner array radars okay so we get to the PESA and AESA what are the, what are the differences between the PESAs and AESAs remember the PESA is the passively electronically scanned array radar and the AESA is the actively electronically scanned array radar so what are the differences the one difference that both of them have is that the PESA the passively has one single TRM remember TRM are the transmitter and receiver module okay so it has basically one radar unit that it's very big and then uh, it has basically the same tech as the, uh, a mechanical scanned array right so it has just one that I was talking about and the AESA has multiple little ones but Matt how does the PESA does the same thing as the AESA with just one TRM well that's the thing instead of having multiple TRMs which are way more complex and remember the PESA is an older radar it has uh, older technology it was done before way before AESA was even thought to be something right so uh, the idea was that it was the evolution of the mechanically scanned array radars so it has one TRM but to do the same as the AESA to 
simulate, quote unquote, that it has multiple TRMs uses something called the phase shifter. This is basically a filter or whatever you want to call it that will shift the signal itself to do whatever the TRM wants. So instead of having multiple TRMs that each of these will do its own thing and detect its own little scan zone and its own target, the PESA will have one big TRM that will have these phase shifters that will be controlled by the TRM itself, right? So uh, it's basically the TRM wants to look left, it will shift like all the little phase shifters to be able to do the same looking at the left as an AESA would do. But it has this filtering method. It's not really a filtering, but it's like a, a, a shift on the signal itself to make it be able to do basically the same job as the AESA, but having only one single TRM. But I can talk about theory. What does that bring to the table? Well, that's the thing. They do the same thing. They, all the things that I talked about it earlier, you know, more range, instantaneous detection, an incredible amount of gimbal, all these raiders will do the same thing. The only difference is that on how they do it, and because of that, one of them will be better for one thing and the other will be better for other things. This is, let's talk about the 90s over here, right? Of course, IASAS became so good right now that I don't even think there is a, a reason to go pursuing PESAs today. But the idea of the PESA is good still because for interceptors and very, very long range targets, since it has only one very big and powerful TRM, it means that the radar will have more range. So PESAs... One single TRM that it's very powerful means more range. PESA, more range, okay? AESA, since it has multiple TRMs and it can basically control them in a very specific way and in a lot more precise way with the computers and everything that is being developed to using these radars, it means that the AESA will be a lot more precise on where the target is. It will be a lot more reliable as well on where the target is and even in the usage of them all because of course if you lose one TRM on the PESA you are done the radar doesn't work if the IASA loses one the radar still works technically right so uh, the IASA is a more advanced technology uh, you need a lot more computing power and you know to control all these TRMs and everything uh, and it is more precise but the PESA it is still better for the longer range technically like i said in today's technology ISs are being so good because they have smaller trms right so they produce less watts of power in the radiation emission right uh while the one big one on the PESA produces a lot more so that's why basically uh, we have more range on the PESA. but the thing is uh with the technology of processors and uh, power and everything becoming better and better uh the ISs are you know they're getting there so uh there's not really a good reason to produce a PESA today but some nations still do because they think it's better maybe it's cheaper whatever but um this is basically the difference between PESA and IASA huh? so PESA and IASA electronic scanner array radars what can you expect from aircraft to come with this thing in a soonish future? Well, guys, there are many, many aircraft, okay? And both of them are used heavily by many aircraft and many nations. I don't know if I told you guys at the beginning of the video, the Russians love Pezas because of the range. Their missiles are, uh, they, they love interceptor missiles, stuff like that. So they love this type of thing, right? So they use a lot of Pezas. The Zaslon in the MiG-31, the N035 Irbis on the Su-35, the Bars radar on the Su-30, uh, the Leninets uh, as on the Su-34. So many radars that the Russians use or the Soviets uh, were using with the MiG-31, right, uh, use Peza radars. But there are also other aircraft, like the Rafale uses a PESA radar as well. So uh, it is pretty interesting to see that. On the IASA side of things, you can basically talk about every single nation in the world will have an IASA. Even the Russians, they do have IASA technology as well. 
but you will see basically everybody having even the Rafale has an IASA radar uh, version uh, the Gripen E that Brazil uses and Sweden and everything they use an IASA radar uh, we have the Super Hornet that uses an IASA radar the mo most modern Strike Eagles uh, the very modern using the APG-63 V3 F-15Cs can use an IASA radar uh, there is one Zook radar on the MiG-35 that it's an IASA uh, the J20 is an IASA, the J10C uses an IASA, the J16 I think uses an IASA, F22s, F35s, F16Vs, I mean, I can go on, the F2, the Mitsubishi F2, so there's so many aircraft and we'll for sure see IASAs and PESA radars very very soon, so expect all of these aircraft to receive some form of electronics Canada Ray radar. Okay, guys, but basically this is it. Hopefully it was simple enough for you guys to actually understand. Uh, it was really hard to research everything and I tried to simplify it as much as I can. It is not easy to simplify this subject, but hopefully I could explain in the, in the most simplified way possible for you to understand. Okay, I see you guys on the next one. Make sure to subscribe, click the like button and see you guys. Bye.